episode of Galaxy Fire Radio, um, where this time, this time, this week, uh, we are going to discuss, uh, what, is this story number seven? Story, story number seven. seven uh, the Sensorites, by Peter R. Newman. I just like his name. Um, and just so my big picture. Ooh. Ooh. I like the special effect. That's not really a special effect. But I am your host, David Beauchamp, and I am joined by my two wonderful co-hosts. Angela Pritchett. And Drew Meyer. Um, let's really jump right into this stellar story of the Sensorites. <laughs> um, I think we're going to do something a little different here. Um, what don't we like about this particular story? Me? Yeah. Episodes two through five. No, um, I, I just, um... In the special features, who is Peter R. Newman, the, the opening line is basically, ah... Poor Sensorites. Um, it's that episode everyone wished had been lost so they could think of it more fondly. It's not a bad episode. But I like to find. It's just... It, if it was a Modern Who episode, it would have been 40 minutes. I think it's just it just suffers from what a good chunk of the early first season stuff does. Is It's a serialized show. It's a story that doesn't need to be two and a half hours long. I mean, they could have done, like, Edge of Destruction size. Oh, yeah, certainly. So would you? Um... I agree wholeheartedly. It's just it drags, and drags, and drags, and like it's it has a good beginning, and the whole plot of it is good, but it's just so long. Like they're just it seemed like the awkward long silence moments were a little bit too awkward and long. It's like close up on Ian. Hold it. Hold it. Keep holding. Hold it. Yeah, just very, I don't know, it was paced really, really slowly. Sure. And you find that with a, almost yeah. every single... But there are some first... classic Who type stuff sure. that I love. It's there, they have good stories, but mm. this, this one was just one of the ones that was just Story's very... fine. I don't yeah. think this story... They, they had a lot of political commentary in it and everything, even mm -hmm. for early Who, but just kind mm. of like... Very slow. Are we still talking about things we didn't like? What didn't you like about it? I mean... Two through five. Um, honestly, I mean, there's not much more I could say that you guys haven't already said about it. Um, you know, it's just, it's not the strongest Hartnell episode. It's not the strongest Classic Who episode. Sure. Um, do you know where it rated it in, in, in the scale? Because I know you got a, a pretty good idea of where... No, actually, that would have been really good. Um, I know it's not the, I know it's not number, you know, the, I know it's not the very bottom of the I list. actually don't think it's in the bottom ten. I yeah. think it's it's probably in the um, bottom yeah. fourth of it out of, out of five. Yeah. Um, but along with things you don't like, things you liked about it. Oh, yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing. The, the first episode in the in this story, I think, is amazing for the sheer fact that it really talked about the continuity that came before it. And it's the first episode that I recall after I, I've watched a lot of the early stuff now. Um, that actually, you know, they mentioned the dialects, they mentioned their adventures beforehand. So it gave, gave the show a sense of continuity, even though it really does have a sense of continuity, because it is a serial, but it was nice to see them reflect back upon their past adventures. Um, that I really did like about it, um, and that's, that's a strong point for, for the story. I'll talk about the social features, we'll get to those in a and couple of minutes. Like about it. Yeah. Well, I, I liked that, you know, they, they did show some continuity, but I also like just the cheesy movie magic type stuff they did. Like, the Sensorites are, they're out in space and they're floating around a little bit, but they're just at a window, and his hands are on top <laughs> yes. of the window. And it's just that cheesy classic Who stuff that was just made me kind of giggle, and it made the episode a little bit more fun, even though it was slow. Um, you know, 
Doctor Who suffers from, classic Doctor Who suffers from this, the first episode, nothing can compete with the first episode. The first episode was supposed to hook us in, and then they went, oh man, how are we going to fill in another five? And they did a really good job with this first episode, because the ending to that first episode, as cheesy as that is, yeah. has that real terror at 20,000 feet, there's something oh, yeah. on the wing feel. Because the sense right when you first see it is really creepy. And the sense rights themselves are not a bad design. Um, their feet kind of annoyed me. <laughs> the, the round feet? Well, it's they something alien, about though. Yeah. It's, it's something very alien with it. And not being able to see the mouths and having the facial hair uh, curled up so that you can actually don't see the lips, yeah. with everything with the exception of the number two. And Davey obviously wants to jump in here. No, no, no. The, the interesting thing I saw when I was looking for the pictures for the giant pictures of the um, DVD covers, somebody actually compared the Ood design to the Sensorite design. And there are a lot of similar el elements between the two. Well, when uh, Davies designed the, the Ood, he designed them yeah. to be relatives of the, the Sensorites. Oh, did he? Oh, absolutely. Oh, I, I had the, no the, idea. Well, it's the Sense Sphere and where the Ood live. Okay. Live in the Ood Sphere. Yeah. Um, okay. And they have, you know, the bulging head, the, the, uh, yeah. the lack of eyelids. Uh, I think the Ood can blink, though I thought that was kind of interesting that um, the Sensorites cannot. Um, that might have been a limitation to the makeup back then. Well, of with, course. With the, with the design they but, were doing. You know, way for them to, again, to create something alien out of yeah. a limitation. And you yeah. can only see one mouth moving. Obviously, when you have a, a psychic entity, yeah. you can't see their mouth move. I personally wish they had the technology and the budget to not have moved the jaw inside a rubber mask and had a voice coming out. But again... You see these early episodes, you really appreciate the theatricality of it and how it is just a, an extended yeah. uh, play with it. Along with that, not only do we get this cool wrapping of the first seven episodes, but you yeah. also get a reference to an adventure previous to yeah. The Unearthly Child. I think it's, he says Henry VIII. They got thrown into the tower because that's where the TARDIS was. And it's uh, it might not have been Henry VIII. It might have been Henry VI. There was a V in there somewhere. So sixth, fourth, or... I think this is the, also the first place that we find out that the Doctor loves um, the uh, French Revolution. Was that, was that, no, I'm thinking of Marco Polo, maybe. Marco Polo. Yeah. But this is the first time we hear, Gal not Gallifrey mentioned, but yeah. we get a description of Gallifrey, and that's episode six. And that's what I was saying, I didn't like two through five, and it's fine. Two through five could easily have been episode two, yeah. and then yeah. we could have just gone one, two, and three. You could have done one and two. You might have actually been able to do it in 40 minutes. If, uh, if, is there anything else? Because I'd like to talk about episode two, unless there's something from episode one. Or, I'm no. sorry, episode six. Go right ahead. Um, but two things that I really liked about this episode is, again, I, I'm going to go ahead and say on, on record, I think Ian and Barbara are my favorite companions, um, especially the classic era. And there's some really great companions out there, but because they set the, the mode and for who they were at the time yeah. that was being filled... There's this interesting juxtaposition on how Barbara's being treated by the, the, the doctor. You know, Ian's very patronizing towards her. I mean, it's, it's horrible and actually painful to watch. And the, and <laughs> the doctor's such a tetchy old man. Um, but Barbara really, like, steps up in this episode. Mm -hmm. It's like half the ideas that succeed are hers. And, and bravo to who, I, Newman or whoever it is that wrote it, to allow her to do that. I thought the ending with a twist with, with and again, spoilers, uh, if you're watching this, I obviously should know the spoilers. The ending with the, the fact that human beings are still alive in there, I thought yeah. that was really good. And I love the humans. I love the survivors. I thought the stiff upper lip British mentality <laughs> maintaining yeah. this, um, you know, reminding the solution stuff, the salute stuff for me, it's for the uniform, it maintains morale. I thought it was a very hilarious. I it was really well, good. I mean, that, that falls to Peter, Peter Newman because what he wrote mostly was the war stuff mm -hmm. and you know the you know stiff upper lip brit military man so it makes sense i mean the other things that he did get turned into film was all military type stuff sure so i mean you can definitely see that carry over into this this the sensor rights mm -hmm. and of course we have our ending uh where where the doctor says he's gonna throw Ian off the ship, yeah. Um, which unfortunately, no reign of terror to to yep. see. And I haven't read the book yet. Um, of course, obviously he doesn't. But uh, and the other thing that we see uh, with this, as far as character development, is you see Barbara. I'm sorry, um, Susan develop as a character. Psychic yeah. powers aside, um, it's the first time she really steps out of the Doctor's shadow and, and becomes kind of her own entity. And 
it's not surprising because I'm sure at this time they've probably got an idea that she's going to be leaving fairly soon because it's only two more episodes before the invasion. Yeah, I was going to ask you how, how far, because I, I, I totally forgot which one it was. 10. Yeah. And so, you know, you've got Reign of Terror um, and then something else, episode nine. Yeah. When we don't, no, no, I'm sorry, episode nine is the Planet of the Giants. Which I can't wait for it to be released. Which is what, in the next month or so? Uh, I think next month. Sure. And then, so then we have the Doctor Vision Earth. Yeah. So. But yeah, um, I want to talk about the special features. Sure. Because honestly, I they're the best part. For me, for this DVD, they are the best part. Um, and I really did enjoy the the sort of documentary they had on Peter R. Newman. Because until they released this DVD, nobody knew anything about the man. They had no idea what he looked like. No no idea. They had n they knew nothing about the man, really, except for his work. Because this, this is his one and only... Um, Doctor Who story. Sure. Um, Didn't and, he try to write another one and they just never... No, this, no? this was just it. Because, I mean, he pretty much fades after this. Mm. Um, you know, he had some moderate success beforehand and, he, and then he faded. But just just the journey and that they took to find out who this man was and what they ended up discovering. I'm not going to spoil, spoil that because, honestly, I really think that's one of the highlights of this DVD set. Besides the first episode of the story, but um, I really did enjoy the special features on this on this one uh, more so than the episode. I was just sitting down to to finish that one uh, when you guys arrived, so I still yeah. haven't finished it. So I yeah. haven't I haven't yet been spoiled for it. So. Yeah, so um, I I really enjoyed it. Um, did you watch any of the special I didn't features? I didn't get a chance to watch it. The special features. Yeah. That episode itself is a bit draining, um, for those of you who watched it, and uh, yeah. you'll understand that, and you haven't watched it, um, the special features I imagine, though it is a little, I don't want to say lackluster, but um, compared to uh, other stories that have come out at this time, yeah. and this is released in 2012, right? Early 2012 yeah, or late yeah. 2011? No, you know, this, this early 2012. You'd imagine that they would have gone through a lot more trouble, but... Um, I, if I'm not mistaken, Sensor Rights is not that expensive of a DVD to buy. No. Um, uh, so, $19.99. Sure, of course. Um, you know, I'm sure if you go on Amazon, it's probably $16. Bucks. It, it's $16.95. Sure. Yeah. Um, that being said, yeah. um, as a part of the Whovian collection, sure, it's worth picking up. Yeah. If I wouldn't be the first one to go out and get. No. Um, so, how many TARDISes do we give this? Which is out of five again? Out of five. How many Derpy TARDISes? Uh, special features of the episode itself. I mean, the whole DVD. Because, I mean, that's what they're buying. They're buying the DVD, just not the sure. episode. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm giving it a generous three. Oh, wow. You're, you're, how many would you I give it? I was thinking two and a half or three. And this is, this is the weird one for me. I'm giving it two, just two Derpy TARDISes. Because of the special features, if it wasn't for, especially if it wasn't for that finding um, Peter or Newman, I don't even think I could give it that many. Sure. Um, by far, I have seen worse episodes. Um, I've, I've seen a lot of better episodes, um, but yeah, I have to go with just sadly two different retardises. Um, which I mean, if if you're giving it two point five, you're giving it three. I'd give it a two point five before going in decimals. Sure. Yeah. So I mean. I, Two and a half. To, so I say this. We rate this as a two and a half derpy tardis. There's no reason episode. for this to have been a two disc set. No, there, there no wasn't. amount of special features. I don't think people were enthused to do it. Um, and again, this is you know, every show is going to have these less than episodes, and this yeah. is this is one of them. And I think you cut out episodes three and four, yeah. make it a four episode. It would have been a little better, but yeah. making people sit down through for that. But again, that wasn't, they didn't design it for DVD sales. It wasn't designed to be replayed. This is no. a, a show designed to, to just kind of carry on. And sometimes they had to fill, you know, uh, a season with an episode here or there. So they had, sometimes would have to make a a, a, a story longer or shorter. They just need another episode. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's what they do with Edge of Destruction. It's like they needed a, a two part filler. So that's what they went with. Sure. Um, but yeah, this definitely does not rank high. So we're yeah. all said and done, two and a half derpy tardises for sure. the sensor rates. Which, you know, yeah. Try to find it used somewhere. That extra half definitely for the parts that you know that that modern who has borrowed from. Exactly. And it, it there's a nostalgia factor yeah. to it for the overall story. So yeah. alright. So, um, 
We're moving on to Who News. We're moving on to Who We're News. We're moving on to Who News. Um, um, this week we saw the release of two yes. new Doctor Whos onto DVD, correct? Yes, we did. Uh, the Protons. Protons and Death to the Dialects. Death to the Dialects. The interesting thing is, is, um, I mean, I can't say that we were, we were the cause, but this is the first time ever where I went to Best Buy and they were sold out. They were sold out. You couldn't get them. They were sold out. I was able to get the Crotones. But they didn't have... They did not have the Death to the Dialects. And I was really upset by that for the sheer fact is I remember... That's... That might be the first Dialect episode I ever saw. Or it's the first one I remember. And so I was so looking forward to watching that again and just relive those sort of childhood memories I had of the Dialects. But sadly, that's not happening right now. And also, the other store that normally gets some Best Buy Wise uh, in Burlington, they were also sold out. Interesting. So, you I mean... They were sold out, they just didn't have them on the No, they shelves. were sold out. Those are the, 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 those are the two locations that get them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the Winston-Salem store, and I checked. Because mm -hmm. they, they did have them in the morning, but by the time I got there at, at like 6, they were out. Go figure. People are getting excited for Doctor Who that they'll grab anything. Yeah. And nothing to dismiss either of those episodes. Yeah. Crotons, uh, I have listened to. I yeah. listened to the audio of it, and I have flipped through the book. Um, I'm excited to see it, even though eh, it's not that highly rated of an episode. Um, but I like the the design of the crotons. Uh, yeah. Um, so I haven't seen anything in toy form. Yeah. So. Uh, and then we have. Well, you you want to do your little thing from? Uh... I'll have to get my phone because I can actually read what. Okay. You wrote, well, it's on my phone. Go grab your phone. <laughs> So we have some 50th anniversary news here. Um, so Unconfirmed 50th anniversary yeah, news. Yes, all unconfirmed. Everything we're about to tell you is unconfirmed. <laughs> quotes here. Sure. Air quotes. The internet is abuzz with the fact that... Yeah, um, well, somebody close to the show supposedly is saying that Tom Baker is going to be coming back to who for the 50th anniversary. As... Did it actually? I, I didn't as read the, whole, the doctor. I didn't read the whole article. As um, the doctor, and that was the thing. He was going to appear as the doctor. Which I mean, Moffat has already laid precedent about why they age, sure, um, and why they look like it. You know, I'm waiting for the official BBC press release, Absolutely. but of course, we also know that they have talked to quite a few of the actors already, anyway. So, them actually saying that it's happening, not a huge surprise, but it's nice to get that official confirmation. They're just pumping us up. They I won't are. believe it until I actually see it. And I'm waiting for the press release. Sure. This is something we've, we're seeing also with um, the next Star Trek, the J.J. Abrams Star Trek, where different actors are dropping hints as to what who yeah. certain people are, and it's turning out to contradict each other. You understand that people are doing this. Um, and Moffat is a genius for the, for the shell game. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, the, you know, the idea is you get people excited... You get them thinking one thing, and you get another one. So, yeah. so speaking of Moffat, um, are we looking at? Let's see, which one was it? Oh, I shouldn't have jumped into this, but I oh, I watched um, a City of Death on DVD. I had seen it on Netflix before. I'd never watched. That's the the Douglas Adams one, not Death of the Dogs. The City of Death. Oh, 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 okay. And what's brilliant is it came out in about. 2003, I think, 2000, no, sorry, 2006, 2007, the, the special DVD release, and in it is Stephen Moffat being interviewed as a writer for the show, and I think he'd only done The Doctor Dances and uh, The Empty Child, so, you know, to have him gushing and talking about Douglas Adams as a writer. So Angela has, has, has some uh, interesting news. Okay, well, the first weekend in July, second weekend in July... There was Fandom Fest and Fright Night yeah. Fandom Fest in Kentucky, and Peter Davidson was a guest. There was also a couple on um, Torchwood guests. And, well, one of the guys who's normally on the show with us, Jason, was in the audience for that panel. And he texted me and asked me if I wanted to ask any questions. So I said, well, ask him if he's coming back for the 50th. And he said that he doesn't know, but he has his suspicions. Oh, and he just texted Stephen Moffat. Yeah. So that was the little bit of 50th anniversary news that I got that was... He doesn't know if he's coming back, but he has his suspicions, so... Yeah. And then, um, of course, um, some breaking news for uh, Dragon Con, uh, for those that are going to be there. Right. Um, well, we have Sylvester McCoy coming back. Yeah, of breaking news for us as of this morning. This is yeah. probably going to be old news by the time you see this one. Yeah. But yeah. 
but yeah, no, that that's kind of exciting. Um, he was a wonderful guest last year at Dragon, and of course, even though I already have two autographs from the man, I will get yet another just so I can ask him about the fiftieth if if he's heard anything. Which of course I think we're gonna get a very similar answer to what Davison gave. Sure. I think pretty yeah, much everybody. Yeah, because if they've signed any type of contract, they can't say oh. anything. One thing that you guys are going to find very interesting, um, they're doing a new Big Finish audio that is the uh, Baker and Leela. Oh, it's a yeah. brand new one. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, because I know you both uh, really, really I've enjoy the scriptures. Loving the Big Finish, by the way. Angela gave me the second season of Magan's stuff, and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I'm thrilled. I haven't listened to the Hartnell awesome. stuff. Um, but, you know, I... And they've actually got the um, the actor who played Ian doing a lot of stories now for the so first Doctor voice. stuff. So. Such a good voice. I'll and tell you. really cool. If you get the Doctor Who magazine that's out right now, so July 2012, they have a really cool interview with him talking about his time on the set of Doctor Who back then. And just in case you're wondering when the best time to get Doctor Who DVDs off of eBay is, the 4th of July. Apparently no one tries to catch their bids at that time it's very easy to order more dvds than you actually can physically afford not that it happened to me this past week i certainly didn't receive five boxes in the mail <laughs> but on a completely unrelated note i have a much larger doctor who collection now so well, that's just good. to give you guys that okay so um is there anything else Okay, so this is uh, probably one of our shortest episodes. Um, so this is uh, Gallifrey Prior Radio signing off. Peace.